just finished digging a couple of holes for an experiment, another experiment. A risky experiment here in Melbourne. This is when you want to be in the tropics. There's no risk. <laughs> you just plant and forget. But it's not like that here, guys. So it's going to be a risk. I'm going to be planting two mango trees in the ground. And you know what that means, don't you? You've heard it enough. I had to decide from uh, 13 different varieties of grafted mango that I have. And I went for this one and the other one. Now, why? Why did I do that? Well, according to the label on Banana Kent, first of all, it's a dwarf, and we like that. We like dwarfs. And secondly, on the label, behind the label, it says it's um, a cold. Let's have a read it about it again. Okay, let's read it. Uh, what? Uh, suitable to cool, cool, subtropical climate. Well, I'm not in a subtropical climate, but I sure am in a cool climate. So I'm helping, I'm hoping that cool, the word cool, is going to get me through. <laughs> yeah, guys, cross your fingers together with me. So that's why I chose him. That's one reason. The other reason is it has the thickest stem out of the 13. It's about an inch, just over an inch, right? Yep. The other one though is thinner. The other one is under an inch. And the golden rule is three inches. So I'm really, really chancing it with only one inch. And the reason I picked this one, the Kara Bao, which I got from Ross Creek Tropicals, is because it's um, famous. Well, it doesn't, doesn't say anything about that on here. It's um, well known to be one of the co most cold tolerant mangoes. Usually as a seedling, but we don't have that here today. We have a, a grafted um, carabao. The carabao, by the way, is known as the manila mango. So we're dealing with the manila mango. And it's holding some fruit and some new growth which was scorched during the heat wave um, last week. Hang on. See the new growth there? Scorched. I left them all in the full sun. We like to toughen our plants, guys. Toughen them. To, to a degree. So, they're the two mangoes. I can't get any deeper digging. We have a slight problem with both holes. And that is, uh, I can't go deeper than 12 inches or 25 centimeters, which is exactly how deep the pot is. That pot there is as deep as I can go in the ground. So I'm going to raise it above the ground. I'm going to raise half the tr half the um, the pot above the ground and half in the hole. Yeah, if you know what I mean. So that's one problem. There's not enough depth. The second problem is I can't crack this even um, with a with a shovel. I can't get through there. That's hard clay, right? It's almost like a rock, almost. And I've been pounding it for 20 minutes. I can't I can't jackhammer any deeper. I could probably go another five inches if I worked on it for another hour, right? But I'm not going to do that because it's going to break my back and break my shovel. I don't have a, a pick. This is where you need a pick. And we have a water pipe. Yeah, we have a water pipe. So you don't want to be doing any um, swinging, swinging with a pick and, and um, hit the water pipe. Now you're asking, why am I planting a tree next to the water pipe? I had a bougainvillea here, guys, for um, 15 years. And there was no issue with the bougainvillea and the water pipe. So there shouldn't be any issue with any other tree because the pipe is above the ground. It's not under the ground. It's just sitting on the surface of the ground with some soil 
covering it so you don't see it. And I'm well aware of it. And the same problem with this hole. There was another bog and villa here too. So, um, I can't go any deeper. This one I've probably got two more, one or two more inches than the other one. So maybe 13 inches deep, 14. So I'm almost 30 centimeters. Yeah, it would be at least 30 centimeters. But um, we can't go deeper. So I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers we don't get any root rot in winter. Because he, as you know, in winter it rains every day in Melbourne. And in summer it rains um, five times in three months. Five days in three months. I'm talking about a decent fall, not, not, not a scattered shower. Scattered showers don't go down that deep. They only touch the leaves and uh, the surface of the um, soil. So a deep, a deep um, um, rainfall, maybe three to five times in summer. But in winter, we get it every second day. That's the problem that I'm facing. So one way to get around that is to raise the tree so it doesn't sit in, sit on the bottom there, right? That would be um, a certain death. <laughs> the first month of um, winter or even before winter so what we're gonna do is just like the other one we're gonna lift it up above the, the rock hard clay um, and we're gonna sit it on some nice coir some nice coir coconut coir right this is like extremely sandy there's a mixture of sand in here too it's um 70 percent coir and 30 percent sand there's no um soil no um compost just coir and sand so the water should just go right through this right and sit at the bottom of the hole not sit in a in a puddle of of um, potting mix. When I do in potting mix, like we used to in years gone by, I used to put potting mix in the hole, right, in at the bottom, and it would turn into bog. And um, goodbye, tropical tree. Yeah, because we're dealing with clay. After 15 inches, we have clay here at Fruitopia. It's all clay. So, wish me luck once again. I'm going to put some gypsum in there as well. And off we go. Let's do this. Hmm. Okay. A huge scoop of a uh, clay breaker. Right. And I put um, some water in it to test how long it takes to drain. Just, um, um, two liters, half a gallon. Yeah, and the same here. All right, after having uh, water sitting in there for 20 minutes with the gypsum, I was able to dig five inches deeper. The same with this one. I've got all these rocks out. They look like uh, tiles, roof tiles, or I don't know. They were right at the bottom. That's why I couldn't go deeper. So it was clay and these broken tiles. Both. The other side didn't have anything, just clay. I mixed in some of the uh, native soil into the coir and sand. The native that I dug out and we should use that now as the uh, the dirt that we're gonna use um, under the tree and then on top when we finished with the tree we're gonna backfill the native soil on top of the uh, tree let's get let's get doing so As I said, half of it under the soil level, under grade, and half is above 
hard to see because of this um, little edging in the way, but you can get the idea when I put this on the ground. Right? Yeah, half of that is. We have to do this, guys. I know in Florida you, you just stick it in a hole, right? Because you've got sand. We don't have sand here. We have clay, right? We've got clay and the tree is dead. If I put it under the soil, it's kaput. I also forgot to mention that uh, this soil mixture with our mango is, it's, um, uh, there's no potting mix or compost. It's um, a, a mixture of coconut coir, um, sand, and peat. Um, not peat, what am I saying? It's, um, oh man, I've got a brain fart. These white guys, the little white guys there. Um, gee, I can't remember now. Yeah, so I made those I made those um, mixes up a couple of months ago for all the mangoes. So I hope this comes out nicely when I turn it upside down. Almost perfect. It um, split in two as soon as I landed it in the hole. <laughs> oh well, at least it didn't fall over the um, the ground. Well, a little did over there, and a little on my uh, chest. Okay, banana cans in. I, I planted it a little deeper than what I said. I put three quarters under the soil and one quarter above. So, just in case it um, gets too dry in summer. It's very dry, guys. Very, very dry. And it's the opposite in winter. It's very, very wet. That's the dilemma we face. It's uh, wet at the wrong time and dry at the wrong time. That's um, the main obstacle that we face with tropicals. Okay, and now for the other mango. This one went in perfectly. Didn't um, crack up. So that was a perfect uh, drop. Um, this is also three quarters under grade for the reason I gave before. I just want them to uh, remain moist over summer because uh, I can't keep the water up guys if, we, if we're back into the high 30s unless I'm sitting here with a hose all day. So that's the main reason. Plus I've got a lot of, I'm pretty confident with all the soil I've used, the native soil which you know is very well draining and uh, the mix I made earlier which is also well draining and then you got the gypsum <coughs> um, beneath the tree okay guys that's it we're finished we've got the uh, manila mango on that side and the can banana can I don't know what its other name is in other parts of the world you'll have to google that Banana can. Not sure. So that's it. Uh, I noticed that both of them have got their roots exposed at the bottom. So it looks like I'm gonna have to uh, mound, mound them. All right, my battery says 10% left. I hope you enjoyed this video. How I plant mangoes in ground. And. Uh, Please like, share, comment guys, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Many more videos coming. Progress report on both of these guys. And uh, see you from the next video. I am absolutely exhausted. <laughs> Whew.